these are two plates for a two plate intaglio print the drawing's been hand cut into the plate and the idea is that it's going to create a print like so so I'm going to show you how to print with two plates I've got my two plates I've got a clean tile with the inks in I've got Caligo Safe Wash Etching Inks a blue and a brown black my dabber some uh, refined linseed oil my burnishing stuff and then I use cut up mount boards to get the ink into the grooves and I simply I'm going to mix some brown with black I don't want it black and I no, so I'm mixing some blue with a brown black more blue than anything I want a little tiny bit of oil in there I should just use a pipette but I'm not going to because it's really stiff the oil is the uh, inks are really stiff Let's see I want to get it so that it's runny enough to use reasonably well not too black and bit more blue in there. The blue is really soft and the brown is really hard. Right I'm going to try that. I get my little mount board bits and I pull it into the holes. So what I'm trying to do is get fill all the cuts and grooves that I've got with the ink and that's what the dabber is for as well because you push the ink into the all the textures so you drag it through with your little mount board piece but you also use the dobber to really get it into all the textures like these areas are all just very slight textures so that's perfect for that. Whereas the little cardboard scraper thing, it's soft enough to not damage the plate, but it's hard enough to push all the inks into all the grooves. And the first inking never comes out, or doesn't necessarily come out that well. It depends how well you ink it up, really because the plate is not primed with the ink, you know. Use the little double just to press it in. will be to lift this off so now you have to start burnishing the plate that is so sticky I need a bit more oil on that should lift it a bit no, I've got too much oil on there. can start to see that I'm getting the image through. You always hold the plate with another piece of paper because otherwise your fingers mark the plate and you get little fingerprint marks on it when you print it. What you can do it's more of that oil on it's just so sticky probably because it's got cold and I reckon it's probably old. Things will have been so quiet over Covid, won't they? So anything you bought just post-Covid may have been sitting on the shelf for a bit. Right, you burnish this 
you're not you've got to be careful you don't drag it out the holes you don't screw the paper up like that because that actually scratches the plate and it'll pull the paint the um, inks out of the holes really wanting to use the flat of your hands all the papers because they're so contaminated with ink really they just need to be chucked this so it's got little I think it's probably had quite a few prints from it it's got little indentations in it that the inks are getting stuck in and little marks where it maybe been damaged like this so you just have to burnish it particularly well over those areas and you can clean it off with a bit of rag or something gentle and small so you get the majority of the ink off. It doesn't have to be perfect because some of the noise on the plate is really attractive. Now for the other one, there's loads of ink on this. I'm just gonna because in fact this one is much more of a shading, whereas this one is the line drawing that brings the image together afterwards. So this one, I don't actually want too much ink in it. I don't want the ink to be too dense. It'll be interesting to see how this works because it is an old plate, this. And I am very careless with things. Right, well, I reckon that's about inked up. And again, because I don't want it too dense. I really don't want to overdo it. Now to burnish up the last bit. For the and of course, if this is a scene that has to be recognisable, it's back to front, because when you print it, it prints the other way. So same with writing, you've got to write it back to front, if you want it to be read. This is very much just seeing how this plate works, because I haven't used it for such a long time. Which is pretty clean. I just want to clean up this one a bit more. So be careful not to drag the ink out of the holes, but to clean it off any areas that you want it to just be a line drawing, you know, that you don't want the, the noise to come out too much. For instance, I can see that there's a lot of little bits in there and round there. So do I want to leave it on or do I want to clean it off? I want to clean it off. Right, let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to take my gloves off so I've got clean hands. So I've soaked Fabriano before and I've put it between blotting sheets and I'm going to find a piece, there's a nice piece for the print and I'm going to blot it out completely. Where is it? There. On the etching press it's two blankets and two sheets of paper. The top one is to protect the blankets from the size in the paper, and the bottom one is to put your plate on. So this is how you print the two plate intaglio print. I need to put the line drawing on the top and the shading at the bottom, otherwise the shading would obliterate the line drawing if it were done last. So the, whatever you want to be on the top of the paper, needs to go on last. I've put the plate down on the bed of the press and I'm going to draw around it just so that I note the corners because this, whoops a daisy, this way the second plate that goes on will be lined up with these corners. What you try to do is, oh, what you try to do is keep it all clean there. Keep it all clean and use a clean sheet of paper to put it on. So you've got a sheet of paper on the bed of the press. You get your soaked Fabriano paper that is well blotted so that it's not too wet. 
Right, and place this over the print so that it's centered. And this piece of paper that you're putting on the top needs to be fixed down. Fix it down with a piece of masking tape. You then put your newsprint on top of that. That's, that's to keep the blankets free from size when it goes through the press and pass it through the press. And I'm going to take it there and back just so that you can see it. But you would normally only pass it through one way. Pull it through. And this is under a great deal of pressure. It doesn't look like it because my press is so geared. Take the blankets off. Take the sheet of paper off the top. And then roll this paper back. Oh, there's not enough ink on there. It'll be okay. Right, take this off. And put your other plate on top. Okay, so then you put this the, the same way up as you had the other one. And you put it to the marks that the other one's made. And the, the lines that you made. Knowing that this is fixed and still in place. So that paper is still in place and it should just sit straight onto the corners of your initial print. Put the things down again. Oops. Pass it through the press. And back again. Just so you can see it coming out. Okay. And you'll see. That the line drawing has been printed on top of the shaded drawing. Take your tape off without tearing your paper. Should be alright because it's wet. And then lift it. And there you are. There's not enough ink on the side there, but that has come up beautifully. So as you go on you realise you know, just how much ink it needs. I mean, that's come out lovely. So there's two prints of that so far. The first one I made a bit of a mess of. But one, two. And neither of them have got enough ink on this side. So I'll have to do some more of them just to get that right. I'd got too much ink on this one in the first one. That's a lot cleaner and nicer. And I'd like a bit more noise in the sky. But otherwise, no, quite like that. Okay.